In this example, we're being asked to solve a first order differential equation. One of the things I noticed right off the bat is that this differential equation is first order and it's linear. The reason that I know that it's linear is it kind of fits that template that linear differential equations can be put in. Y prime plus P of T times Y equals Q of T. And it doesn't matter if it's a T versus an X. I think in another video where I did an example, it was P of X times Y equals Q of X. It's irrelevant what, what actual variable is being used here, but you can kind of tell it fits this, this template here. And uh, the Y and the Y prime are not raised to any higher powers like squared or cubed or anything like that. And the coefficient for Y prime is one. That's an important thing as well. So if those things are satisfied, this guy is called uh, linear. And uh, if you're, uh, this is your first time uh, seeing anything about linear differential equations, I would encourage you to first of all back up and watch the video before this one where we kind of explain the idea of linear differential equations. Okay, so anyways, the, uh, the, the main thing we need to do to solve a linear differential equation, if you remember, is to find the integrating factor that's very, very important. And the definition for the uh, integrating factor was e to the integral of whatever capital P is. And capital P is your coefficient of y, and in this case it would be tan t, tan t. So if we can compute e to the integral of tan t, that's really going to help us solve this problem here. Uh, now, before we go any farther, let me just mention this guy over here real briefly. We have an initial condition for, for this differential equation. Uh, some differential equations are provided with initial conditions and others aren't. If there is no initial condition, then the solution will have a plus C in it somewhere. But if you're given an initial condition, you can actually use this initial condition to figure out whatever the plus C is. And so we'll, we'll have to do that at the end of the problem. So uh, anyways, let's do this first. Uh, I actually chose this example on purpose because um, I wanted to illustrate the fact that uh, you have to be very sharp with your integral rules from back in Calc 1. I know this is uh, traditionally a Calc 2 topic or a differential equations topic, but usually if a student struggles with solving linear differential equations, it's because their Calculus 1 skills are, are possibly a, a little lacking perhaps. Uh, and here's a prime example. What's the integral of tan t? You, you think through most of your basic trig functions, we, we don't know anybody whose derivative would be tan t. Now I could take his derivative, his derivative is secant squared, but that's not the integral of tangent. So that, that, there's a big difference there. So, um, so anyways, how do we integrate tangent? Well, let's do that over here on the side real, real quick. Um, integral of tangent would be equivalent to the integral of sine t divided by cosine t. That's the same thing as tangent. And writing it like this helps me see more clearly, oh yes, I think this would be a log rule because you have the uh, roughly the derivative of cosine over cosine. Um, technically, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, but that's not a huge deal. I'll put a negative on the inside, a negative on the outside, and this guy's integral, we get negative um, the natural log of the absolute value of cosine t, because uh, it's du over u, du over u, whose integral would be the natural log of u, basically. And so um, this would go in the exponent. We get e to the negative natural log absolute value cosine t. Now, one small uh, hiccup. I would love to cancel this e and this natural log. Unfortunately, I cannot do that yet because of that negative. That negative uh, is keeping me from canceling the e and the natural log. So a uh, simple trick, we can use the property of logarithms to pull this guy back up into the exponent, pull him back up into the exponent of cosine uh, so that we can cancel the e and the natural log. All right, so once we do that, the e and the natural log cancel, and we would get cosine of t raised to the negative one power, or one over cosine t is the same thing, or actually one over cosine, that's the same thing as secant, isn't it? 
All right. So this guy is your integrating factor. Integrating factor. Now, what do we do with this guy? What, what, what's his job? Well, he, I'll tell you this. He's not the solution to the differential equation. He's something that will be helpful uh, in finding the solution. So what we do uh, once we find the integrating factor is we distribute this guy through the left side and the right side, through the left side and the right side. So let's, let's do that algebra there. Okay, so let's see what we get when we distribute this integrating factor through both sides. The left-hand side would be secant of t times y prime plus secant t tangent t times y. Let me jot that down real quick. We would have secant of t times y prime plus secant of t tangent of t times y equals, and let's distribute secant through to the right-hand side as well. This would be secant squared t, secant squared t, plus secant t times cosine t. Well, cosine t times secant t, secant is actually one over cosine by definition. So when these cancel, you'll actually get the number one. That, that's actually pretty nice. So plus one. Now, here's what's going to happen with all linear differential equation problems. When you multiply through by the integrating factor, especially on the left-hand side, the left-hand side will become the product rule. And that, that's, um, that's not coincidental. This will work every time. Uh, look at this. You have the um, derivative of y times secant plus y times the derivative of secant, Good, right? Because isn't the derivative for secant, secant tangent? Um, that's not a coincidence. Um, it's not just for this problem. Uh, it looks like it's kind of coincidental, but it's not. Every one of these linear differential equations, once you multiply the integrating factor through on both sides, the left side will become the product rule, which we can write as the derivative, as the derivative of some product. And so what product would give us this if we applied the product rule? Well, I think it would be secant of t times y. Those would be the two terms whose product rule would give us this equals secant squared t plus 1. All right, we're almost done. Uh, in all this work, here's the answer. Here's the guy I'm looking for, y of t. And so it's a two-step process to get... Um, y solve for by himself. Step one would be to integrate both sides. Integrating would get rid of this derivative right here. And so the left hand side would be secant of t times y equals the integral of secant squared as we um, hopefully know would be tan t. The integral of secant squared is tangent. Plus the integral of one would be t and then we would have a plus C for our constant of integration, of course. All right, and then last step, last step. Hang with me. Um, we want to get the Y by itself. So we could divide by secant. We could divide by secant. But remember, secant is 1 over cosine. So I think it would be just as good to multiply both sides by cosine T. I think that would be just as acceptable. So these would cancel. And you would get y equals, let's see, tangent is sine over cosine, sine over cosine. When you distribute a cosine through to tangent, I think the cosines cancel and you're just left with the sine, which was in the numerator, plus t times cosine of t plus capital C times cosine of t. And this guy is your solution to that differential equation on the previous page. This guy's the solution for this linear differential equation that we have right here. So that's a great thing. This is a very typical problem. All these linear examples, you'll, you're, you'll, you're hopefully starting to notice they're all the same. You put it in standard form, you find your integrating factor, you distribute it through both sides of the differential equation, Lo and behold, the left-hand side becomes the product rule. And then you write it as the product rule. 
and then you're a couple of algebra steps away from having your answer. All right, so that, that's the generic solution to the differential equation. All right, but now we have to consider this initial condition. Uh, just to keep this video from getting too long, I don't think I'm going to uh, work out the initial condition in, in this video. I think I'll break it up and do it in the next video. But uh, just to give you a nudge in the right direction, if you want to go ahead and find it, this is a T value and this is a Y value right here. So if you let in your solution T be zero when Y equals one or whatever it was, then that should allow you to figure out what the specific C is. And then you can substitute that capital C, that constant of integration uh, in your generic solution. And it would not only satisfy the differential equation, but it would also satisfy the initial condition as well.